This video covers holder in due course, defenses, liability, and discharge. Holder in due course. Uh, this doctrine is important because it allows the holder of a negotiable instrument to take the paper free from most claims, uh, and we'll get to what claims uh, it doesn't get around, and defenses against it. Without the doctrine, such a holder would be a mere transferee. The UCC provides that to be an HDC, or holder in due course, a person must be a holder of paper that is not suspiciously irregular. Uh, she must take it in good faith, for value, without notice of anything that a reasonable person would recognize as tainting the instrument. Uh, a payee may be an HDC, but usually would not be, because he would know of problems with it. So uh, one thing we want to take a look at is this concept of uh, the shelter rule, which is really all about uh, making somebody protected as a holder in due course. So this is an example out of your text, chapter 15. Uh, I think it was uh, Ben Franklin's manuscript sold to Harold. Uh, it's actually a forgery. Harold gives a note uh, to Clifford. Uh, Clifford um, negotiates the note to Betsy. Uh, she's a holder in due course because she doesn't um, know of any uh, defects. She takes it in uh, good faith. And uh, she then transfers it to Al, who actually has knowledge of the forgery, but since it's transferred from an HDC, uh, Al is also protected. So when we say protected, um, we're talking about being sheltered and... Uh, real defenses would not be effective, although we'll get to some defenses that would be effective even against an HDC. Uh, the shelter rule says that a transferring instrument acquires the same rights for transfer or had, so a person can have the rights of an HDC without satisfying the requirements of an HDC, and that was the example that we just looked at. The privileged position of the HDC stands up against the so-called personal defenses, which are more or less uh, contractual defenses. Um, however, not against real defenses. Real defenses are good against any holder, including an HDC. Uh, those defenses are infancy, void obligations, fraud, bankruptcy, discharge of which holder has notice, unauthorized signatures, fraudulent alterations. So, uh, while a pay may, pay may be an HTC, his or her rights are such are limited to avoiding defenses of persons the pay did not deal with. The shelter rule says that the transferee and instrument takes the same rights the transferor had, and the FTC has abrogated the HTC doctrine for consumer transactions. And we'll look at the notice uh, here in a minute. So these are the real defenses uh, that are effective even against an HTC. This is that same scenario where um, a note is given uh, to the payee and the note is negotiated to the HTC. Um, the HTC takes it subject um, to these real defenses. Um, most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, for example, bankruptcy. If the uh, debt is discharged in bankruptcy, then it needs to be uh, defense against enforcement of the note. So here's the notice. Uh, basically he talks about how the um, HTC uh, special status isn't available in uh, consumer credit uh, transactions and this is because the FTC uh, was uh, trying to deal with consumer fraud around this uh, claim and defenses. Uh, one issue that does come up, uh, this is in Chapter 16, Figure 16.1, uh, is when an agent or representative uh, signs on a note. So in this example, there's uh, this is right in the book, the uh, company, and then you have the agent who uh, signs on behalf of the company this note uh, given to the bank, and then that note is negotiated to a third party. So what liability would the not only the corporation have, but the agent for the corporation. So under the UCC, a signature is pretty much any writing or mark uh, which um, is done by the person indicating the writing is authentic. 
agents often sign on behalf of principals and when they're an authorized agent and they make it clear that they're signing on behalf of the principal then the principal's liable they are not uh, but when the agent signs incorrectly the UCC says in general that the agent is personally liable to an HDC who takes the paper without notice the agent is not intended to be liable uh, one situation that comes up is unauthorized signatures or forgeries uh, they're ineffective as to the principal. They're effective as the forger signature, unless the principal or the person paying an instrument has been negligent. Uh, so if there's like a stamp or some other way where the um, um, party allows this unauthorized signature to take place, then they may have uh, liability for it. People who sign commercial paper become liable on instruments by contract. Um, they contract to honor the instrument. Another uh, thing to look at is primary and secondary liability, makers of notes and drawees of drafts um, have primary liability. That liability is unconditional. Secondary parties include drawers and endorsers, and their liability is conditional. Uh, and it arises if the instrument has been presented for payment or collection by the primarily liable party. The instrument has been dishonored, and there's notice of dishonor provided to the secondarily liable parties. The presentment and notice of dishonor are often unnecessary to enforce contractual liability. Then there are warranties. Um, these are transfer warranties. Uh, there are five of them. Um, transfer of a negotiable instrument warrants to the transferee five things. Uh, that they're entitled to enforce it and the authentic and authorized signature. That there has been no alterations, no defenses, and no knowledge of insolvency. I'm going to take a look at transfer by delivery. If the transfer is by delivery, the warranties run only to the immediate transferee. If it's by endorsement um, to any subsequent good faith holder, presenters who obtain payment of an instrument and all prior transfers make three presenters' warranties uh, that um, they're entitled to enforce, that there's been no alterations, and uh, they're warranting the genuineness of the drawer's signature. These warranties run to any good faith payer or acceptor. And we'll look at discharge. If a person pays or accepts a draft by mistake, he or she can recover the funds paid out unless the payee took the instrument for value and in good faith. Potential liabilities arise from commercial paper uh, are discharged in several ways. Anything that would discharge a debt under common contract law will do so. More specifically, as to commercial paper, of course, payment discharges the obligation. Uh, other methods include tender of payment, cancellation or renunciation, material and fraudulent alterations, certification, acceptance, varying draft, reacquisition, and in some cases, unexcused delay in giving notice of presentment or dishonor. Uh, endorsers and accommodation parties' liability may be discharged by the same means that a surety's liability is discharged to the extent that alterations in the agreement between the creditor and the holder would be defenses to a surety because the right of recourse is impaired to the surety.